Several years ago, I, in my pursuit of trying to figure out why I am so damn distractible, I happened to come across uh, some books uh, by a guy by the name of Dr. Edward uh, Hollowell. And uh, the most famous book that he wrote is uh, Answers to Distraction in the area of uh, ADD and Delivered from Distraction, and one of his newest books, Married to Distraction. How many of you are married to distraction or you're the distraction part of the marriage? Show of hands. Okay. He loves it when I call him that. He loves it. Oh, when you call your husband distraction. That's, that's cute. And so, um, shh, shh, shh. you're distractible right now. Just kind of keep without a mic. All right. So basically, um, I read one of his uh, books that was recent at the time. It's still recent, uh, called Crazy Busy. And the, the subtitle was Overworked, Overstretched, and About to Snap Strategies for Coping in a World Gone Ad as an ADD. And I read this book, and it was freaking amazing. It was awesome. It was how to deal with the world of, of overwhelm. And I ended up contacting Nightingale Conant, and I said to Dan Strutzel, I said, you know, you, you should track this guy down and, and do a program with him if he'd be agreeable to do it. And what was kind of funny is I actually sent uh, him the book, uh, Crazy Busy, and he ended up reading it and contacting him. And he called me, you know, later. He said, yeah, we just did a program with the author of that book you had sent me. And I said, really? I've, I've wanted to interview this guy for Genius Network. Can you put me in touch? And so it was really funny how it kind of worked. And so... Uh, Lo and behold, he put me in touch with, uh, with, with Ned. His nickname is Ned. He likes to be called Ned. And so we had a great conversation, and that, that uh, ended up leading to uh, us doing a Genius Network interview on the subject of Crazy Busy, which led to a friendship, which led to us doing a seminar together with Ken Glickman uh, called Success with Sanity. And now Ned's become one of my dearest friends. And the guy's absolutely brilliant. He's uh, you know, trained at Harvard, uh, taught at Harvard for over 20 years. Uh, he got his degree from Harvard. He's been on Oprah, I believe, six times. Uh, Dr. Phil, three times or so. Dr. Phil heavily, heavily endorsed his book, Married to Distraction, said it was one of the best books ever, and uh, he's been on the Today Show, Good Morning America. He is the top ADD, ADHD uh, psychiatrist on the planet. He has uh, written 18 books, has sold millions of copies, and I asked him to come and speak with all of you as very successful entrepreneurs, because uh, he wrote a great uh, article for the Harvard Business Review, Why Smart People uh, Underperform, and all of you are extremely smart people, and we live in a world of information overload, and it's one of the you know, biggest areas of, of angst and stress, and I don't know a more qualified person to come and talk to all of you about how to deal with overwhelm. His newest book is called Shine, Using Brain Science to Get the Best from Your People. Uh, and so I'd like to give it up for my good friend, Dr. Edward <laughs> Hollowell. Thanks for coming down. Thank you, awesome, man, I appreciate it. And uh, uh, where's the mic? Just, just when we need it, right there. Yeah, let's go and use that one. And I'll leave the book up here. Does that work? Very good. Very awesome. Good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. I, um, I had to give a talk last night, so I couldn't come down last night. So I'm getting up at 4 o'clock this morning to catch the 6 o'clock plane to get here uh, in time. And my wife didn't know. She rolls over. It's 4 a.m. Where are you going? I said, I'm going to New York. And, and she said, well, God, I hope they're paying you a lot. And I said, no, they're paying me nothing. And, and she said, why are you going? And I said, it's Joe Polish. And she said, she a big smile at Fort, oh, I love Joe. <laughs> and I think Joe brings that out in so many people for such a rude, you know, obnoxious human being, you know, who runs a company called Piranha Marketing. Everyone loves him, you know, and, and he, and I think it's because despite his best efforts, his, uh, his soul just glows, it just shines through. And, and that man is truly one of the most generous, giving benefactors of mankind that I know. And he allows me to sneak in. I'm not a marketer, you know, I'm a, a, a writer and a psychiatrist. Uh, I'm, I'm just always amazed at the brilliance of, of, of the groups of his that I am lucky enough to, to speak to and, and hope that I can add something of value. You all are, I quite agree with Joe, doing such incredibly important work. 
uh, and you're, you're very much what drives this country and, and really what has made this country great. And, and what I want to do is, is offer you just a few points, because I, I don't want to take much time, you want to go have lunch. I want to offer you uh, a few points as to, as to, how, to moder how to manage modern life. And I want to end up by uh, giving you a few ideas about a trait that I think probably about 90% of you share, uh, and, and I'll come to that at the end. Um, there was a, a New Yorker cartoon not long ago that showed a, a, a man in a store handing a box to uh, a, a parent and said, this is our latest toy designed to help your child learn about modern life. No matter how carefully he puts it together, it won't work. And, and the notion being that uh, there's something going on, uh, as, as Dan was saying earlier, something's always going wrong. Uh, there's something about modern life where it's very hard to get it to work. Uh, it, it is this amazing toy, and yet it seems as if something's always going wrong. Now you all, as Dan so aptly pointed out, you all are supremely good at handling things that go wrong. In fact, you get bored if something isn't going wrong. You know, so, so, so you've got a major leg up. But I, I want to give you a couple of ideas that might give you even more of a leg up. Uh, three ideas. Uh, uh, in dealing with the forces uh, at work these days, I was just commissioned by the Harvard Business School Press to write a book about focus. And the reason they said is because their research with executives and entrepreneurs shows the number one complaint that uh, their executives and entrepreneurs, and they're pretty good at contacting these people around the world, doesn't have to do with the economy. It has to do with something much more mundane. It has to do with the difficulty of achieving focus. The difficulty of staying on task. You ask someone, where do you do your best thinking? Rarely do they say at work. They say in the shower. That's the most common answer. In the shower. And that's because we don't have yet the waterproof Blackberry that we can take into the shower with us. You know, so, so thinking is a dying art. Uh, and and, and, and the, the, the trick is, I think the real uh, uh, trick these days is to create the conditions under which your brain can operate best. Now, it's not the same for every brain. Very important to one size does not fit all, and that's where teachers get it wrong and parents get it wrong. Uh, what's good for your brain is not necessarily what's good for your spouse's brain or your employee's brain or, or your dog's brain. But I, so I want to give you three pointers that will help you create the conditions under which your brain can operate at its best. Number one is boundaries. The great thing about technology is it's broken down all the boundaries. But that's also the curse of it. I remember when they first started putting telephones in the bathrooms of fancy hotels. I remember sitting there one day, doing what you do when you sit in the bathroom, looking at that telephone and saying to myself, now what if that thing rings? You know, what is the etiquette? Do you answer? Hello, where are you? Well, you know, I mean, and, 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 and now, no matter where we are, there's a telephone. No matter where we are, we can be reached. And praise God, that's wonderful, but it's a curse as well. So, so, so and, and, and what it leads to is this epidemic of people having impervious boundaries, of having permeable boundaries, way too permeable boundaries. So they're constantly being interrupted. They're constantly being distracted. And they complain about it, but they overlook the fact that they've given away control. They allow the interruptions. In fact, they want them. It's gotten so that it, I had an executive who said, when I said, why don't you put your computer behind you so to check your email, you have to swivel. 
And she did, and she said, I can't believe how much time you've saved me. She said, when my computer was sitting in front of me, it was like a jar of M&Ms. I'd kept reaching for it. I'd kept checking my email whenever I'd have a break in the action, whenever I wanted a little bit of stimulation. Instead of an M&M, I'd go check my email. Because there's something irresistible about an unopened message. You know, we just have to open it, even if it's boring and stupid and distracting, and it's going to take us off track. So we've allowed ourselves to be seduced by that jar of M&Ms, no matter how disciplined we may think we are. And what people have developed is this habit that I call screen sucking, where they just glomp onto a screen and they, you know, they suck away on it. You know, they say, I'm just going to check my email. An hour later, they're still there. And they're just, they're just sending it, they're just data transmitting. They're just sending and receiving messages. They're not doing any in-depth thought. And they're, they're, they're just, they're just pro- proliferating more drivel, you know, and, 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 and under the guise of working. But it's not work. And, 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 and so the notion that you would, that you would close your boundaries... It's very scary for some people. I, I, I love the woman who told me when I went out to the Gates Foundation and gave a talk. The woman who brought me in said, you know, I climbed the ladder at Starbucks, uh, and, and, and I was also a mom. And I could relate to this because I'm a dad. I have three kids. most important thing I do in my life is raise those three kids. So she said, I was paying attention to my kids like a good mom, and I was climbing the ladder at Starbucks. And the way I could do it is I got so good with my BlackBerry that I could do it one-handed. And I I could stir dinner with one hand and do my BlackBerry with the other hand. She said, I got this great promotion to the Gates Foundation. She said, when I I got there, my supervisor said, you got to get rid of your BlackBerry. She said, I can't get rid of my BlackBerry. It's the key to my success. Supervisor said, get rid of it. She said, well, all right, but I'm not responsible for what's going to happen. She gets rid of it. And sure enough, First week, it's like she's just quit smoking. She's reaching for it. She's dreaming about it. She's grumpy. She's angry at her boss for making her give it up. The next week, she says, something amazing happened. She said, I felt calmer than I'd felt in the longest while, and I was getting more important work done. Now, the take-home point is not get rid of your Blackberries. The take-home point is to put yourself back in charge. Put yourself back in charge. Realize how much brain power you're giving away when you have permeable boundaries, when you have instant access. And you say, oh, I have to, I might lose a customer. I got to be available 24-7. Well, first of all, you can't be available 24-7. And second of all, you've got to train your customers. Pediatricians learned this decades ago. You got to, they train their patients when they can call. Well, you got to do the same. You got to train your customers. If you make yourself ever available, they'll interrupt you constantly. You've got to make yourself selectively available. Create boundaries so that you can use your time most productively. And, and that also uh, involves triage. You know, what I, what I learned in, in the ER, you know, what's the most important thing to take care of? And you can't take, take care of it all simultaneously. Multitasking is impossible. Remember that. It's an illusion. You cannot pay simultaneous attention to two cognitively demanding tasks. Can't be done. What most people mean by multitasking, say doing your email while you're talking to someone on a cell phone, they mean switching attention back and forth from one to the next in rapid succession. Now, if the person you're talking to is stupid, you can get away with it. You know, or if the email you're sending is inane, you can get away with it. But if the email is on nuclear physics and the person you're talking to wants a recount of the plot of King Lear, you're not going to be able to do it. You simply won't be able to. Uh, uh, so, so, So if you want superior peak performance, you must unitask. You must turn off the distraction so you can give your full attention, not to mention all the forces that supplement your attention, you see, and that's where creativity comes from. The unexpected thoughts, the intrusive thoughts, the new ideas. If you're multitasking, you're going to shut those out. 
If you're unitasking, you allow them to, pu- to, to propel in. And for you guys, that's one of your greatest assets. Okay, that's point number one. Take back control. Create boundaries according to your priorities. I'm not telling you what should matter most. In my own life, I preserve tremendous amount of time for my kids. If you don't have kids, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, maybe you'll preserve tremendous amount of time for your number one client or your pet project or your sailboat. I don't know what it is, but you, you decide. But what I, what I am saying is make that determination because if you don't, someone else will do it for you. If you don't take your time, it will be taken from you. So you need to exert what control you have in order to make your time your own, in order to use your precious time, and after all, it is our most valuable asset, to use your precious time in the way that you want to. And don't let others decide for you. Okay, step number two, point number two, and I'm, I'm going to finish so you can get out of here, because I know you want to, uh, is emotion. Emotion. Oh, how this is how this is overlooked in terms of its importance. If boundaries sets the stage and makes peak performance possible, emotion is what drives it. Emotion is what drives it. And people forget emotion is the on-off switch for learning, for creativity, for brainstorming, for superior performance of any kind. If you are in a state of fear or anger, uh, or, or, or kind of distraction, there is no way, there is no way that you're going to be able to achieve at your best. So it's very important that you see to it that you preserve what I call C state. Adjectives that begin with the letter C. Cool, calm, collected, careful, convivial, curious. Um, uh, in C state, in that state of positive emotion. That will drive superior performance. And I think the two key ingredients are the people you surround yourself with and your belief in the mission that you're engaged in. If you're working with people you like and if you're doing something that you think matters, you're going to be in a good mood. Even when you're tackling problems. If you're, if you're surrounded by people you like, oh boy. What a difference that makes. Don't make the mistake of just hiring people who you think can add value. You know, what can you do for me? Think also, what does it feel like to be with that person? You know, I, get, I don't know Dan Sullivan well, but I get a real strong feeling that he's a fun guy to be with. And same thing with Dean Jackson. And I know Joe is a bloody drag, you know, but uh, he's really fun to be with. Um, if, and and, and uh, my friend Ken Glickman, I mean, there are people in this room who are so much fun to be with. I don't care what we're doing. You know, I'll be in a, in a positive emotional state. And I just was wondering, when you were filling out that thing about a, a problem you dealt with recently, how many of the problem had to do with choosing the wrong people? How many times you've, you've not had a project work out, not because it wasn't a good project and all that, but just because it was a drag, because the people you were working with were, were difficult to work with, you didn't like being around them? Uh, it really matters that sort of sniff test, what's it like to be with this person? Is this person open, transparent, real? And that's my test. Is this a phony or a real person? If someone's real, I don't care what they like. They can like to have sex with chickens, you know, that's fine with me. If they're real, if they're real, then they pass my test. If they're phony, I hate them. I just, I just have a tremendous intolerance for hypocrites. It's like a line that I share with Joe that I like, Lord, help me always to search for the truth, but spare me the company of those who have found it. You know, I, 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 I don't like zealots, and I don't like uh, phonies, you know. And, uh, but whatever you need to do, take emotion very seriously. And now I said, the people you're around you want to like, the other part is the cause you're engaged in. You know, what do you believe in this cause? Yes, you want to make money, but you also want to make a difference. You want to do something that you can be proud of. You know, so of course we all want to make money, but but how we do it, you know, is it something that we're proud of? It's something that we'd want to teach our children. 
Is it something we'd hope our children would learn and emulate? Is it something that, that adds value to the world in, in some kind of way? And, and uh, uh, the, the fact is you can't fool yourself about this. You really can't. If you're engaged in something you kind of think is, you know, kind of not all that worthwhile, you're not going to be in as positive a state as if you're engaged in something where you're like, I just believe in this so deeply. One of the reasons that I've continued working with ADD for so many years is I just, I want to bring this message to the world because I've seen how it changes lives dramatically for the better. And I'll tell you about it in a minute. But, and every one of you has something like that. Something where you're so turned on. If I could just tell everybody about this, you know, the, whether it's the, the mouse and the, uh, the cheese and the cat, or, you know, if, if I could just get this into everyone's brains, the world would be a better place. You know, that's what you ought to be working on. And, and again, you have to prioritize, you have to triage, you have to make time for it, because you can't develop 12 brilliant ideas simultaneously. You got to kind of pick a few of them and, and water them and develop them. But that combination of, of people you like, positive people, plus a positive mission, that tends to create and drive, give you the energy. You know, where does your energy come from? That tends to replenish it every day. And then the third point, the point that really allows the work to continue, if this, if this creates the condition and this drives it, then this next point uh, allows you to execute it. And, and this is focus. And this is the, this is the trick that uh, I want to give you a couple of suggestions on. Focus sounds so simple, uh, but it can be very elusive. Now, it is achievable, contrary to popular belief. It is achievable. Um, uh, people can get in the way. As a patient of mine yesterday, this wonderful boxer uh, sitting in my office, uh, he's been taken advantage of. People have wanted to explo exploit him using his story. He's a retired professional boxer. And he said, Doc, people, oh, people, they're all such bullshitters. You know, and, 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 and what, they've, what they've done is they've exploited him and demoralized him to the point where it's very hard for him to focus uh, on anything because he, he's lost hope. And so I'm there, I'm there helping him reconstruct hope. Um, most people these days lose focus because they're overcommitted, because they, they have too many, they, as I said with point one, they allow for too many interruptions, they have too many obligations. So it's a combination of, of the practical and the emotional that can conspire to, to, take, you, to take you off task. Um, what you want to do, if possible, is work primarily in what I call your sweet spot. Now your sweet spot is the overlap of three circles. The first circle is what you really love to do. The second circle is what you're really good at, or what Dan calls your unique ability. And then the third cycle, the third circle, is what drives your mission, or put more bluntly, what someone will pay you to do. So where those three circles overlap, what you're really good at, what you really love to do, and what someone will pay you to do, or what advances your mission, advances your cause, that's your sweet spot. And the more time you can spend in your sweet spot, the more focused you will be. We tend to be very focused in our sweet spot. It is in our sweet spot that we enter the state called flow. The psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi did a lot of research and showed people are at their absolute best when they become one with the task, where they're so into it they forget what time it is, whether they're hungry or not, whether they have to go to the bathroom or not. They are one with the task. And, and flow tends to occur when you're doing something that's challenging, that matters to you, that you have an aptitude for. And that's, that's your sweet spot. Now, you can't spend all day in flow. It, it just, it's too taxing. But as much time as possible. And those tasks that are outside of your sweet spot, if you can, use the acronym CDE. Curtail, delegate, eliminate. Cut back on it, delegate it, or get rid of it altogether. Uh, you, you, you don't want to spend your life 
getting good at what you're bad at. And a lot of people do that out of sort of a moral obligation. I should get good at this. I'm bad at it. I should get good at it. Well, there comes a time somewhere in your 20s or 30s where you should stop trying to get good at what you're bad at and kind of develop what you're good at and then hire out, delegate, uh, team up with uh, to, to, uh, to, 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 to advance your skill in your sweet spot because that's really, that's really where you're going to contribute and that's also what people are going to pay you to do. Um, now you all are cursed because you have many sweet spots. You have many things you love to do. You have many things you're good at. You have many things people will pay you to do. So don't spread your sweet spot energy too thin. You know, try to pick a few and, and, and stick with those. Otherwise, you'll, you'll get frustrated and you'll, 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 lose that emotional, you'll, you'll lose that emotional energy. Focus can be achieved if you follow these three suggestions. They're simple, and I've, I've tried to make them as clear as I can. Boundaries, emotional state, work within your sweet spot. And let me end up by just describing to you a trait that I think uh, probably at least 70% of you have, if not more. And it's the trait that is so misleadingly called attention deficit disorder. It's not a deficit, and it's not a disorder. It is, in my opinion, I have it myself, I think people who don't have it have attention surplus disorder. You know, uh, it, is, it is a trait that is genetically woven into this country. Uh, if you think of who colonized this country, you think of who in the world would get on a boat in 1600 or 1700 and come over here. You had to be some weird kind of visionary, dreamer, risk-taking um, uh, wacko, you know? And, 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 and then the waves of immigration that continue. Don't, uh, just, we've romanced it. Oh, I don't speak the language. I don't have a penny to my name. I think I'll go to New York. Well, that's really dumb. But, you know, this is the American gene pool. This is who we are, and that's the ADD gene. That's the ADD gene, the part that people don't talk about. The upside of ADD, risk-taking, dreamer, entrepreneur, pioneer. People with ADD also tend to be incredibly big-hearted, generous, give you the shirt off the back. They tend to have uh, ideas they have no idea where they came from. Uh, my friend David Nealman, who founded JetBlue Airlines, you know, he, he, he invented the electronic ticket. And I asked him, David, how did you think that up? He said, I have no idea. I just saw the idea one day. And he said, everyone in the business laughed at me. They said, that's ridiculous. No one will go to the airport without a paper ticket. Well, it's one of the great innovations in aviation in the past 25 years. It saved the business many millions of dollars and saved us all kinds of heartache. And it is sort of ironic that it's someone with ADD who thinks of a way for us to go to the airport and not have to remember to bring our ticket. You know, but but, uh, but that, that's an example of, of just sort of ideas that come out of nowhere that are brilliant. That you can't show your work, as your fifth grade math teacher said, show your work. You can't. You don't know where it came from, it just popped. And that, you see, and, and that's where the, the doctors get it wrong, and I'm a doctor, but we talk only about the downside. We say impulsivity. That's part of, the, part of ADD. Well, what the heck is creativity? But impulsivity gone right. You know, you don't plan to have a creative thought. It, it's impulsive. It depends upon disinhibition, spontaneity. You're being able to entertain heretical thoughts you're being able to entertain the completely wrong idea and find that it's the right idea. <clears throat> or your ability, as Dan said, to go where there's danger, to be drawn into danger, to take the chance. And that's where you find people with ADD, where there's high risk. You know, uh, entrepreneurs, brain surgeons, don't worry, they pay attention in the OR. You know, they, they, um, uh, 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 traders on the commodities exchange, race car drivers, Hollywood actors, you know, and, they're, and they're, you could, these people share a quality. They have a zest for life. They are into life. They are enthusiasts. And, and, and it is so wrong, as we do, unfortunately, with some of the, so many of these kids, to, to bring them down with negative diagnoses to, to, because then they acquire the real disability, which is shame and thinking that I'm bad and something's wrong with me. And, and this is one of my crusades in life is to put an end to that. 
You know, I, bring, I tell kids, you are so lucky. You are so lucky. God gave you an amazing brain. You have got a Ferrari engine for a brain. You've got a race car for a brain. And, and, and you are going to win races. But you do have one problem. You've got bicycle brakes. So you can't stop when you need to. And I said, but I'm a brake specialist, so that's okay. We're going to turn you into a champion. And that's the adults with ADD. That's many, if not most of you. Impatient. Uh, come on, get to the, come on, cut to the chase. Hurry it up, you know. And, and that can be good in a business conversation, but it's not so good in a, in a romantic conversation, you know. Uh, okay, so you love me. What's your next point? You know, you, you know. <laughs> You know, you know, the trouble lingering, you know, and, 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 and so, uh, you know, it, it all depends on the context, how, how, whether it serves you well. And, and if you learn how to strengthen your brakes, if you learn how to harness this amazingly powerful brain you've got. You know, I say ADD is like Niagara Falls. What you need to do is build a hydroelectric plant. Once you build the hydroelectric plant, you can light the state of New York. But otherwise, it's just a lot of noise and mist. So again, I'm not in the business of treating disabilities. I'm in, the mis I'm in the business of building hydroelectric plants, of unwrapping gifts. And whether it's a child with ADD or an adult with ADD, these are the people that drive this country. These are the people that innovate, that create, that reach out, that break rules in the most wonderful ways, who take the chances, and, and, and we should champion them and stick up for them and protect them because I'll tell you another thing about David Newman, and he's given me permission to say this in public. The day JetBlue went public, in a matter of hours, he made hundreds of millions of dollars. Driving home that night, was he driving home to pop a bottle of champagne and celebrate? He said, no, I felt like the same loser who couldn't hack it in high school. See, that's preventable. That should never happen. And that's the, that's the damage done by, by unwitting, well-meaning, but woefully misguided uh, teachers, parents, and, and, other, and other even professionals, I, I am embarrassed, embarrassed to say. If you resonate with this description of, of uh, ADD, of the attention span where you can hyper-focus when you're into something and you space out when you're not, of impatient, of new ideas popping in all the time, of, of trying to strengthen your brake so you can sustain focus. I urge you to get the diagnosis because adult ADD is vastly underdiagnosed. And, and when you work with someone to build that hydroelectric plant, and I've seen it now thousands of times, your productivity can increase exponentially. I don't think there's any diagnosis in all of, of mental health where you can see a life change more dramatically for the better than the diagnosis of adult ADD. Well, uh, Joe wanted me to take a half hour, and I think I've taken less. Um, just, to, just to summarize, and I hope I've, I've kept it in terms that you could, because people don't remember, you know. I hope I've kept it in terms you can remember. Control your boundaries. Take back control. Don't give it away. Don't let others run your life for you. Recognize the incredible importance of positive emotion. Being in a positive state emotionally is what drives hour to hour, day to day, peak performance. And I think the way to do it is to surround yourself with people you like and be engaged in a mission you believe in. And number three, Create focus, try to work within your sweet spot, what you're good at, what you like, what adds value someone will pay you to do. And then finally, if you happen to have the trait of ADD, don't just deal with it by working harder. Deal with it by, by seeing a, a good professional, and they're not always easy to find, uh, and, and uh, uh, taking care of it. If you want to be in touch with me, Joe has all my contact information. My website is drhallowell.com, D-R Hallowell. Dot com. There's a lot of free information there, a lot of material in my books as well. I'll just end up by, by telling you uh, truly what a treat it is for me to, to be with you. I love this audience. You really are the people that um, electrify, energize uh, this world. 
and uh, I love your, your way of just uh, embracing life, uh, not sitting back on the sidelines and making judgments of getting into the action, and, uh, uh, you know, bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, hold on to it. We're going to do Q&A. Obviously, you were awful. They did not like you at all. No, thank you. That was awesome. I, what I want to do is take a few minutes for Q&A because I'm going to push lunch out. Uh, and can we do this just because it'll be quicker? Can, can you come up to the mic? Would that be okay? If you have a question, we'll take a few questions. And we also have a gift for everyone, too. Uh, um, Ned actually created a journal uh, called Unload Overload, a 31-day program that will put you back in control of your crazy, busy life. And I had uh, an artist actually take some of Ned's uh, incredibly good verbiage. He makes up these great words to describe modern life, like screen sucking, wasting time engaging with any screen, uh, it, is this, and then uh, leeches and lilies, you know, cultivate uh, lilies, eliminate leeches, dooms, doom darts. EMV, which is email voice when you're on the phone with somebody and you know they're checking email because they're not. Uh, Jigga guilt, not just regular guilt, but enormous guilt. Tail dogging when the, 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 the tail is wagging the dog. Uh, kudzu, which is a weed that grows out of control, which is how most people's information becomes. Gemmel smirch. Gemmel smirch is even more dangerous than kudzu. Uh, anyway, morning burst, um, you know, junk time, telephone tag, all kinds of stuff. So you will love this journal, but it consists of seven questions that you ask yourself every day, and uh, we've done this with our, our uh, coaching members, and they love it. They keep buying it over and over again, and I think you're all going to love it, so we'll have a stack of these that'll be right out there. Everyone can just go and take one, so thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you. Great talk. Uh, you know, we all have access to a tremendous amount of wisdom and information and data, uh, you know, going to events like this. You know, uh, we're fortunate to be able to gain a lot of wisdom from a lot of different people, and at times, that can be a distraction. So, uh, and regulating that over time, and the rhythm of that is something that I'd be very interested in hearing, you know, how to optimize that. I, I, it's a, such a good point because, uh, and, and I think an analogy is made to eating. When you feel full, stop trying to take in more, because it almost makes you sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get so many good ideas, it's like rich food, that you start reeling. You know, so you have to walk away from the table, digest what you've consumed, and then come back for more. Uh, the, the great thing about modern life is there's so much out there. The curse of modern life is there's so much out there. So you have to regulate your intake according to your digestive system. Because it, it really does reach the point, I, it's happened to me, where I, I feel almost sick to my head because <laughs> I'm trying to juggle too many good ideas. They're all great stuff. You know, but you get at some point it's it's dizzying and they'll it'll just be confusing. So you got to walk away, digest what you have, do one of Dan's exercises where you write it down. How am I going to make use of this? How am I going to turn this into something other than just oh that was really cool and interesting, and then come back for more. Uh, otherwise, it it just does overwhelm you. Okay. One one follow up question. Uh, you know, I've heard of a concept of overload of getting overloaded so much yeah. <laughs> to a point where breakthroughs can happen. And just wonder what you think of that concept. Well, I, I think the most common breakthrough is you punch your head through the wall. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, I, you know I, I don't think people get overloaded usually in a good way. In fact, my uh, Harvard Business Review paper was overloaded circuits, why smart people underperform. It, it most of the time has a very negative effect on performance. I suppose you might get to where it's like a runner's high and you just get started floating above it and have new ideas and you sort of tune out. But I, but I think most, for most of us, that's pretty unusual. I think we, most of us need to get in the habit of regulating intake uh, and, and how much we will allow ourselves to process before we go on to the next batch. I told him I had to go next because I was getting distracted. Yeah, exactly. So I, I have a question. Um, sometimes uh, I find that I can focus much better, and maybe it's my imagination when I turn on music or have TV playing in the background, or sometimes when I'm in a meeting, this stupid little phone, I, I have this stupid little game, 
And sometimes I can just play the game and listen to a conversation and feel like I'm focusing more, although it's not a really great way to connect with people on a personal level. It's a very important point, and you're exactly, you're exactly right. And I, and I urge people, uh, when it comes to your brain, do the experiment. What's, what works best for you? I do all my writing with music playing. Now, that's not multitasking, because I'm not actively listening to the music. My way of putting it together, it's not neurologically sophisticated, but it, I think it is true. That music engages the part of my mind that would otherwise be distracting me. And, and so you find people who doodle during lectures or conversations. They're not, they're, that doodling is engaging the part of their mind that would otherwise be daydreaming. So the, and, and some people can pay better attention if they're walking around the room. When in my lectures to ADD audiences, the, room, the back of the room is always people are pacing back and forth. I'm not the least bit offended. They're paying better attention by walking back. And so you're, that's not multitasking. That, is, that actually is an aid to help you focus. Explain that to your wife. Tony, you, Tony, that's not multitasking. People don't know that. So you, I, I urge people to, I urge people to say, I do this so I can pay better attention to you. I fidget, doodle, pace, what have you, so I can pay better attention to you. Uh, uh, it, it's not the same as doing your email while you're listening to someone. That's different. This is a, this is not active attention. It's a, a passive kind of engagement of the part of your brain that would otherwise be distracting you. It's interesting to hear because it, it does drive me crazy that I feel like I have to do something to pay attention. And I've always felt like it was a weakness. Oh, and a, no, and no. A big, it's a big issue. You know, Get like, rid of the moral diagnosis. Yeah. The moral diagnosis has hounded people for too many centuries. No. If it works and it's safe and it's legal, do it. I like, I'd like to find some illegal options as well. That would be <laughs> I'm sure you could come up with many. <laughs> So, so, so the concept of this program is that if you get one $250,000 idea that you're, you know, you've paid it off and, and you're allowed to come back next year, well, what you gave me personally in this last half hour is priceless because uh, my father's ADD, I was ADD, but the, the, the one that I really worry about is my son who's ADD. And for years, he's always had this burden of, you know, it's not a good thing where it actually is a very powerful thing. Yes. So thank you very much. I really appreciate oh, it. I'm so and, glad. And this I'm... idea is priceless. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And um, for, for, for parents like him that have children, uh, I know that, I mean, Ned truly is the top ADD, ADHD uh, psychiatrist in the world. Uh, I've never met uh, any doctor in, or any psychologist or psychiatrist does not know who you are. And I know hundreds of clinics all over the world uh, uh, use your methodologies and stuff. So if somebody wants to find someone, uh, just any recommendations, can it all be done through your website? Sure, or, sure. or call me. You guys just call me. Uh, email me. Uh, I answer my own emails. and. Uh, uh, you know, I'll I, give it to him so it's not on video like that, but we will give everyone. Sure. And, and I've, I've, had, I've had Ned, actually. We did a two-day seminar together. He's spoken at some of my events. I mean, obviously, he's an amazing speaker. He's got so much wisdom to share, and so I would highly encourage all of you to, to work with him in any capacity, including uh, I know probably you know, 30 or 40% of the audience uh, would probably really find doing even a personal uh, consultation with him uh, on the phone uh, very valuable, and I've I've done that several times myself, and he's helped me with some, uh, you know, certainly some uh, crisis situations, and he's just a, a gem of a guy. So I, I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much, and uh, stay for lunch if you can. Yes. And if awesome, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. His new book is. Uh, his new book is, uh, is Shine, and Eunice, uh, let's buy a copy of this for everyone here, and we will send you a copy of his book, okay? Okay, thank you.